everybody, Sir Skeptolot here. I'm at the Creation Museum. They've got a new exhibit on te teaching teaching the Bible or some shit. Let's check it out. Come on! Whoa, it's dark in here. Not a lot of museums have theaters right at the entrance. This is kind of abnormal. I wonder why they want to teach you stuff on a movie screen before you actually get into the museum. Excuse me, miss. Uh, what is this? What are we looking at here? In this video, they have one too. They have a movie too. It's much different than the Field Museum. The Field Museum? Oh my god, you're that tour guide from the Field Museum. Uh, yeah. How is this one different? What's this one like? and the darkness. It's what you call the big bang. God said, let there be light, and bang, there was. Uh, oh, Jesus. Oh, God, this is not good. Ma'am, this, this movie doesn't offer anything. It's just quoting the Bible and giving visual aids that portray what the Bible story says. But is there anything we actually learn here? Is there any kind of science behind the knowledge that is being portrayed in this video? Why are we even watching this? I like this movie. Okay, but is it relevant? Is this accurate information? Absolutely as much sense as anything else in that field museum. Does it? It does. It's as valid as anything else. They don't know either. The field museum has no idea either. They have no idea either? Is that a slip up? Are you admitting that this museum has no idea what it's talking about? This museum just follows the word of God. Instead of the God of the Bible, they're just counting on the God of primordial soup. That's all it is. It's all faith. That doesn't sound right. Alright, Megan, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt here. We'll say that this video is just here to wet your whistle, to get you in the mindset of the scientists that did the research for this for this museum. Uh, let's go let's go with that as our baseline here. So where are you gonna take me next? Where where is the beginning of the story here and how do we know for sure that it's true? Here we are in the Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. Alright. All right, what do we got here? It's basically just a depiction of what the Bible describes. Okay, so this isn't like an exhibit of our knowledge. This is just a depiction, like an artistic rendering of what the Bible says. So again, we're just in a wet your whistle kind of thing. There's there's no knowledge here, right? There's no scientific research or anything that proves that this is true. You're just assuming it's true because the Bible says it's true. The museums are supposed to showcase human accomplishments, accomplishments in science, in archaeology, in art. And this isn't an accomplishment. This is a fucking propaganda piece. Let's see what we got here. We got like, okay, like some sort of antelope or gazelle or something. Fucking bear. There's no way these uh, like zebras. These are like ancestors of zebras. What are they? coyotes? Panthers? What are these? A stegosaurus. Okay, a stegosaurus. That's not very believable. I very strongly doubt a stegosaurus would have been here. Oh, Adam and Eve. Yeah, very fancy. It looks like they're having a private moment. I'm not really comfortable watching this. Penguins. Penguins? Somehow that's even less believable than the fucking stegosaurus. Okay, now this is definitely a private moment. We. This, this is a children's museum. Why are we watching this? This is this is not. Oh, there's a snake. All right, and llamas. Some very small animals are coming in to get their names. He's giving them all their names. Well, that's really fancy and everything, Megan. But the Garden of Eden was supposedly in Mesopotamia. You've got animals here like penguins. They would have had to have somehow migrated down to the southern hemisphere, mostly Antarctica, South America, and southern Africa, in less than six thousand years, without leaving a single trace of their migration. This doesn't make any sense. It's uh, some sort of dinosaur, or dragon eating a eating a pineapple. <laughs> Cool, and I'm guessing you have some sort of reason why this is here. Genesis did say, and it, there's it, the verses right here, that all that God gave plants and everything that grows to every living thing. I don't even really care that it's eating a pineapple, Megan. Why is it even here? How does it exist in this time period? To every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for fruit. Great, so the answer is the Bible says so. Spectacular. I, I hope this isn't a running theme of our time here. I'm not a very patient man. You know, 
this is just the whole museum is you know taking Genesis and uh, bring, bringing it to life in a very literal form. I think it's wonderful. I mean, why not? It's unlike anything else you'll ever see anywhere else. To be honest, I don't even really care that this place exists. Sure, people that believe in the Bible should have an exhibit like this, but the fact that this place is called Creation Museum is like a dirty lie. First of all, creation, it implies that this place, this world was created in six days, that the world is no older than 6,000 years old. That's the point of this place. And second of all, it's called Museum. Museum is a place where knowledge, it, human accomplishment is displayed, where we can learn things. This is this is like a celebration of ignorance. This is an art exhibit based on the Bible. Do not call this a museum. I mean, sure, the scientists that put together the Field Museum may not have all the answers, but the answers that we do have are based on research, on scientific knowledge, on hundreds of years of collaborative data. At least that place is better than this place. You have to admit that. No. Oh, no. What do you think? No. No. You like this better? Yes. Like my daughter says, who wouldn't like this better? Everybody forgets about the tree of life. There were two trees in the garden that the Bible talks about. The tree of good and evil, knowledge of good and evil, and the tree of life. And the tree of life, if you ate from the tree of life, you would have eternal life. Yeah, but even a six-year-old should be able to tell that that's a metaphor for something. I mean, look, the, the fucking tree itself didn't actually exist, you idiot. Whoa, where are you taking me now? Oh, this is scary back here, eh? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, this is scary. So, so dirty. Look at how much he looks like a dragon. Whoa! Oh god, damn. And the eyes of both of them were open. Bad serpent. Again, clearly a metaphor for something. It's, it's incredible that there's people that believe that a snake itself actually spoke to a human being and tricked it into eating something it was told not to eat. It makes no sense. This is a metaphor for something. So God replaced the fig leaves with clothes made from animal skins. This was the first blood sacrifice. So the story of the Garden of Eden ends with God forcing Adam and Eve to leave the garden and wear animal skins and till the earth to survive. This story is an allegory. It's an allegory for when our ancestors left the pre-Neolithic age of hunter-gatherers. They were forced to wear clothing so that they could leave their natural environment and till the ground because there wasn't enough food to go around. This isn't about a mistake made by a woman. This isn't about some serpent tricking us. This is about our population booming so big that we had to start building technology to to survive. It tells us about how our society abandoned scripture as a, something that, that everyone um, believed in, and then this is what happened. And it is the truth. I mean, it just degenerated. Okay, so after the Garden of Eden, when the curse of Eve's sin pours across the earth, sin enters the world. So all of these problems, war, famine, missing children, all of this shit in this curse section of the museum, the museum is saying that this all exists because of the sin of a woman. The sin of one person who ate fruit they weren't supposed to eat. I again, do you not see that this is a fucking metaphor for something? The problems in the world do not literally exist because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. This is just reality. We live in reality now. We don't live in the golden age of hunter-gatherers anymore when life was easy, life was fun. The reason life is so difficult is because there's so goddamn many of us now and the earth changed. The environment changed since the early humans. This isn't the same world that they used to live in. <laughs> Go on, it helps. I think it just, I think it just shows that, that um, you know, the difference in the culture. The culture has declined. There's no doubt about the fact that the culture has declined. I think you could argue that the culture has not declined. In fact, rates of violence and murder have gone down exponentially in the last few decades. This kind of reminds me of that thing at Epcot. You know that ride you go on? I think it's in the- Megan, look up! Look out, it's a fucking dinosaur! Megan, look out, it's a fucking dinosaur! Megan! Megan, it looks hungry! It's got hungry look in his eyes! Come right for you! And Megan, look out! So basically, this next thing we're going through is all the trials that human beings go through after sin entered the world. So now everything's hard. Thanks a lot, Adam. Thanks, Eve. Everything's difficult. 
Yeah, I have to admit, life would be pretty hard if you're trying to till a field while being hunted by velociraptors. So this is the Ark Encounter. These are the plans that Steve Ham was telling us about. They're building the Ark Encounter, and it looks like it's going to be something. I mean, look at it. Yeah, if this thing ever gets off the ground, what's it supposed to have? Well, look at the size of that thing. Looks like picnicking areas and, and viewing. And I'm sure there's tours on it, gift shops, restaurants, more restaurants, bazaars. Oh, so the Ark Encounter is going to be a really great place to spend money. I can't wait for that Noah's Ark adventure thing. That looks very fun. We'll have an excuse to come back to Kentucky. Yeah, N no, nobody wants an excuse to go back to Kentucky. You know what I like about this place? It means that the evolutionists no longer have a, they no longer have a stranglehold on ancient history, and I like that. No, I would say that this museum is a spit in the face of our knowledge of what happened in ancient history. This museum has no proof or evidence of any kind that anything that it displays happened at all. I don't, I don't think anybody ought to have a stranglehold on anything. I don't know, Megan, some people are into that. Everybody's allowed to have their own opinions on stuff, and this is a great place for other people who maybe question what the Darwinists are pushing down our throats. Yeah, you can have your own opinion about anything, but to teach an opinion is to teach a lie unless you have evidence. What is this? An ark for ants? I mean, they, they, they love to say this is all magical. It's all about, you know, this is just mythologi mythological and... Well, so is evolution. Fossil records and DNA science versus ancient desert dweller book. It's basically the same story with different characters. Is it, Megan? Because your story is missing billions of years. It's still a creation myth. It's still a creation story. It's just a different one. You know, Darwin had a different creation explanation that took the God of Abraham out of it, but there's still a God involved some all-powerful thing they call nature. You talk about it like it was science's intention to remove God from the equation, though Christians quite often point out that there are Christian scientists. The intent was never to remove God, the intent was to explain how things happen on their own. Nature is not an all-powerful being that chooses how things work. Nature just is what it is. Humans, plants, animals, the cosmos as a whole, we are all slave to nature. Nature does doesn't choose for us, we choose based on nature. Everything depends on your worldview, doesn't it? Like you said, they have the same information, but they're starting from a different worldview, and the evolutionists are starting from another worldview, and so they come to different conclusions, especially when there isn't, you know, hard evidence. Uh, unlike Richard Dawkins would suggest. But we do have hard evidence. For example, the radioactive decay of different elements. We know how long it takes for certain elements to decay, and based on that decay rate, we can tell exactly how old the world is. Why would God try to trick us into making us think that the world was billions of years old by just lining it with more lead than a young Earth could possibly have? There really isn't. Yes, there is. So the thing that they do here that they also do at the Field Museum, though, is they write very authoritatively. So, here it says, you know, 4,350 years ago. They're sure about that. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> and I think, but I mean, this is, this is the research they've done. And this is the, these are the numbers they've come up with. So I haven't done the research and I don't know. Wow, that's actually very mature of you, Megan. I feel the same way about the Field Museum. I mean, those, that's the research they did. Those are the numbers they came up with. Yeah, but I can't help but feel there's a stark contrast between your opinion towards the Field Museum, who, like you said, spoke just as authoritatively, but you, for some reason, had a huge problem, even though none of the things that they had in the friggin' museum were up there because they were guesses. They were all based on scientific knowledge. I want you to prove the same thing about this museum, where they know for sure that this thing is from 4,500 years ago, even though our scientists would say that it is probably millions of years old. Yeah, you could make an argument that your worldview can skew your opinion on something, but you are mistaken when you say that scientists start with the worldview that the world is millions of years old. We came to that conclusion over hundreds of years of debate. In fact, when the first scientists came to the table saying that the world is probably something billion years old, even though they didn't get the number right the first time, there was a huge debate over it, and all of the old school scientists refused to believe it. It took 
almost a decade for the paradigm to change. Yes, now scientists do start from the opinion that the world is over 4 billion years old, but that's because that has now been established. Is it true? I don't know. Nobody knows. Nobody was there. And therein lies our problem, Megan. You didn't know when you were at the Creation Museum and you said that's fine. And you didn't know when you were in the Field Museum and then you thought that because you didn't know, that means nobody else can possibly know. Therefore, you think the museum is a giant lie. What's important is knowing all the different theories and making up your own mind. What do you think? Yeah, but before knowing that, I think it's important that you know what a theory is. A theory is not a guess. Guessing that the Bible is right, that's a guess. Guessing that the world is 4 billion years old, that's a guess. It's not a theory until it can be proven. A proven paradigm is what you call a theory. Einstein guessed that space and time wrap around gravity. This was just a guess until it was proven during a solar eclipse that the position of stars seemed to have changed based on the gravitational pull of the sun. The theory of special relativity did not become a theory until the moment that was proven. I'm okay with not knowing. That's what I think. Yeah, and that's totally fine. Nobody's saying that you need to go out and learn everything, but I think it's fair to say that if you don't want to know or don't feel like learning, you probably shouldn't go around telling other people what is and is not evidence. This, this is a good exhibit. Natural selection is not evolution. Absolutely not. No one is. You know why? It's observable. None of that makes any sense. Natural selection is not evolution because that sentence makes no sense. Natural selection is simply a single mechanism in which evolution uses. Evolution, macroevolution, one species going into another is not observable and never has been. Not in a laboratory, but things don't have to happen in a laboratory for us to observe them. Again, we have fossil records. Well, a fruit fly is nothing but a, it never becomes anything but another fruit fly, a different type of fruit fly. Well, I mean, yeah, if a fruit fly becomes another kind of fruit fly, that's speciation, but um, I, I knew what you meant. A horse doesn't become a fly, or a horse doesn't become a bear, and a bear doesn't become a whale. Yeah, I would hope not, because all of those kinds of transformations would kind of spit in the face of evolution. If a bear became an aquatic animal, it would probably become some other kind of species of animal that we've never even thought of before. Whales evolved after bears, this is not a lie, bears walked into the ocean with their mouths open, looking for food and became whales magical. Actually, that is a lie because whales have a common ancestor with pachyderms and deer. You realize, of course, Darwin was not saying that's exactly what happened. He is describing the kind of process that would have to happen. Bears were just the first thing that came to mind, I'm sure. There's no way he could have known they were pachyderms. I think if he were alive today, I don't, I don't think he'd be pleased with what his followers are doing. I don't think he would agree. You know, the cell is much more complicated than he thought it was, and if he were any type of good scientist, he would start over again. Look for different for different explanations because this one doesn't quite fit. It's too late. It doesn't matter what Darwin thinks now. It turns out that he was right. He was wrong about a few little details and got even more wrong later down the road, but it turns out he was right. Yes, he couldn't have known how complicated the cell was. He couldn't have known what the ancestor of a whale was, but he was right about all those things. Darwin could come back to life right now, come up from the grave and say, I think I was all wrong the entire time. It doesn't matter. We've proven everything he said to be correct. We still Still to this day continue to prove his theory correct. Darwin says this, that this is how everything branched off from one common ancestor. Yeah. But this makes much more sense to me. Each thing according to its kind with microevolution. Well, it's cool that that makes more sense to you. Do you have a PhD in evolutionary biology to make such a claim? So when they talk about the fruit flies that mutated into having four wings instead of two. Oh, here we go with the mutation thing, right? So that's supposed to be oh, proof of evolution? No, it's proof of evolution through mutation. For one, the fruit fly is still a fruit fly, it just has more wings. Yes, but it proved mutation. And for two, the wings, the second set of wings were useless. They were, they were useless to the fruit fly. And it caused them not to be able to, um, it caused them not to be able to breed. And so these so-called evolved fruit flies now can't breed. So how, 
How smart was that? Well, exactly, Megan. How are we supposed to make an animal that's already evolved to suit its environment perfectly evolve even better? That's impossible. That's not what the point of this experiment was. We knew that without changing the environment of this animal, there was no way we could make it evolve in a short period of time. And, of course, it's not smart. Evolution is not about intelligent design. It is the opposite of intelligent design. It's nature taking its course. There's no intelligence behind it at all. Not every mutation is beneficial, and sometimes there's genetic drift where mutations eventually become anything but beneficial. It was it seems it was a it was a mutation, neg a negative mutation, not a positive one. Yes, but it was a mutation. That animal, if it had survived, would have given that same mutation to any of its offspring, and any of its offspring would end up giving its mutation to their offspring, and that is proof of evolution through mutation, Megan. We're talking about bacteria and how antibiotic resistant how it becomes antibiotic resistant, but even the antibiotic resistant bacteria then are less functional than the original bacteria, and so they, they actually lose function, even though they become resistant to the bacteria. So it's not like they mutate into a superbug that can't be destroyed, it just can't be destroyed by that particular antibiotic. Well that sort of does make them a superbug if they're resistant to antibiotics, Megan, and it's not that they're losing information, they've traded some of their information for other information. Okay, what do we have here? An Allosaurus skull in the middle of a room about the flood. Okay, so I'm guessing that this room is dedicated to explaining why the fossil record does not mix. This is actually the only room in the entire museum I would be interested in seeing. I want to see what their explanation for why there are no dinosaurs on the same layer as any squirrels in the fossil record. So here they're talking about that they don't know what happened to the dinosaurs. That's refreshing, isn't it? They don't know. Fuck! I mean, I think it's certainly fun to talk about, isn't it? Isn't it fun to have alternate theories on things? You don't have to believe it necessarily, but it certainly is fun to think about and talk about. I mean, there are other explanations for everything in life, aren't there? Yeah, that's absolutely true. It's fun to make thought experiments about different possibilities in the universe. For example, sometimes I play around with the idea of there being an electric universe or a plasma universe model. But you gotta learn the difference between a fact, a theory, and a fucking thought experiment. It's just simply not American to accept. And is it worthwhile to get right? Do these people have a right to believe what they believe? Do they? Or do they, should they be threatened with rape and death? Honestly. <laughs> one homeschooling mother's opinion matter to you. And as you can see, my children have been to all these museums, including the more evolution museums than Crete. This is the first one we've ever seen that says anything else. But I'm guessing this is the first museum you've taken your children to that you didn't say, because the museum doesn't know, we shouldn't believe it. Tell me I'm wrong. How is any of this hurting you? You, who sit there behind your keyboard and don't do anything with your life.